Hello friends, welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. So, this is the first lecture and this lecture deals with elementary row operations. So, what elementary row operations are and how it is applicable to solve linear system equations we will see in first few lectures. So, before stating what elementary row operations are first we define binary operations. So, let, let G be a set a binary operation on G is a function that assigns each ordered pair of elements of G an element of G. So, what does it mean? It means if G is a set you take any two arbitrary element in that set apply the operation given to you and the resulting element if it is also belongs to a same set then we say that the operation is a binary operation. Like you take like you take the set of natural numbers okay, and you apply usual addition. So, we know that we if we take any two arbitrary natural numbers and we apply usual addition operation usual addition on the natural numbers then the resultant is also a natural number that means the usual addition for the set of natural numbers is a binary operation. Similarly, if you take in set of integers here okay, and you apply usual addition, you take any two integers add them the resultant is also an integer that means, the usual addition over the set of integers is a binary operation. Similarly, you take the set of rational numbers or the real numbers or complex numbers under usual addition they are usual addition is a binary operation. Now, similarly, if you take the set of natural numbers okay, and you take binary operation as usual multiplication. Okay. If you take any two natural numbers you multiply them the resultant is also a natural number that means, the usual multiplication over the set of natural numbers is a binary operation. Okay. A similarly, set of integers, rational numbers, real numbers and complex numbers the usual multiplication is the binary operation. Now, if you take a set of natural numbers subtraction and divisions is not are not binary operations. You take suppose you take two natural numbers say 1 and 2, 1 minus 2 is equal to minus 1 which is not an integer that means, subtraction over set of natural numbers is not a binary operation. Similarly, if you take division you say you take two natural numbers say 2 and 3 you divide them 2 upon 3. So, 2 upon 3 is not a natural number. So, that means division is not a binary operation. So, that means binary operation is the operation which when applying to any two elements of a set G the resultant element must be in the same set then that operation is called binary operation. Now, come to group when we say that a set is a group under some binary operation. Okay. So, let G be a set together with a binary operation that assigns to each ordered pair a comma b of the elements of G an element in G denoted by a into b or a b. Okay. We say G is a group under this operation if the following three properties are satisfied. Okay. First of all the operation which we are defining on the set G is a binary operation. Binary operation means is satisfy closure property that means you take any two arbitrary element on the set G the resultant element is, uh, is also in G. Okay. And the what, what are the other three properties which a set uh, G should satisfy to form a group? Number one associativity, associativity means you take any three arbitrary element A, B, C in G. If you take brackets in the first two elements or you take the bracket in the uh, last two elements the values are same that is associativity. Okay. Then the identity, identity means if there exists an element E which is also called the identity in G such that A e equal to E A equal to A for every A in G. Then the third property is inverse, inverse means 
for each a in g there is an element b in g called the inverse of a such that a b equal to b a equal to e. Okay. So, if these three property hold on a binary operation uh, applied on g then we say that the g under that binary operation is the group. So, what are the four properties which we have discussed? Number one the operation must be in a binary operation, number two associativity, number three identity, identity means you take any arbitrary element uh, a in g there exist e such that a e equals to e a equals to e a, uh, a for every a in g. Inverse means for any a in g there exists element b in g such that this result hold. Moreover this group will be called an abelian group if it satisfy commutative property also. That means a b equals to b a a b equal to b a for all a b in g. Okay. So, let us discuss uh, this by an example. Suppose you take a set of uh, real numbers, okay? set of real numbers. Let us word denoted by capital R okay? and under which binary operation it must be mentioned. The binary operation which we are defining here is suppose usual addition. Okay. So, we know that usual addition on the set of real numbers on the set of real numbers is a binary operation because if you take if you take any two elements a comma b belongs to R then a plus b if this is usual addition if we are denoting by plus then a plus b is also in R for all a b in R. So, that means this plus which is applying on the two elements a b in R is a binary operation. Okay. Now, now if we now we have to see that are whether this set of real numbers under this binary operation forms a group or not. Okay. So, it so this is a binary operation now we have to see the other three properties are satisfying or not. Number one property is associate, associativity, associative property. So, associative property is obviously satisfied because, because addition always satisfied associativity. You take you for uh, for all a, b, c in R, in R a plus b plus c is equals to a plus b plus c you take bracket in the first two elements or you take bracket in the last two elements resultant is same. Now, next is to see whether identity at exist or not. You take any element a in R. Okay. Now, a plus e is equal to e plus a must be a for any a in R and this implies e equal to 0 and 0 is in R. So, this belongs to R that means for any A in R identity element is 0 which which exists and is as and belongs to the set of natural uh, real numbers. The third property is inverse you take any A in R then A plus B plus is equal to B plus A should be equal to E, E is 0. So, this implies b is equal to minus a which also belongs to r. Suppose you want to find out the inverse of 2, 2 is a real number. So, inverse of 2 is minus 2 which is also in r. So, we have shown that all the properties are satisfied that means this set r over the binary operation usual addition forms a group. Okay. Now, if we see the same set of real numbers same set of real numbers uh, over multiplication. Okay. If you say same set of real numbers over usual multiplication, usual multiplication. So, we have to exclude 0 because uh, inverse of 0 is not defined here. 
so we have to exclude 0 okay now if we are taking this set the set of real numbers excluding 0 under usual multiplication it forms a group usual multiplication is a binary operation because if you take any two arbitrary element from the set from this set say g and multiply them then the resultant is also a real number so it's a binary operation now the first property associativity holds because a into b into c is equals to a into b into c for all a b in a all a b c in g the second property is identity you take any element in g say a belongs to g then a into e should be equals to e into a should be equals to a for all a in g and this implies e equal to 1 which is in g so there this means there exists an identity element in g and third is inverse if you take if you take any a in g so it is a into b should be equals to b into a should be equals to e which is 1 so this implies b is equals to 1 by a which also belongs to g suppose you want to find out multiplicative inverse of 2 so it is 1 by 2 which is in set of uh, real number excluding 0 so that means this set g under binary operation usual multiplication constitute a group so the, here are some examples you see the set of integers z the set of rational numbers q the set of real numbers r are all groups under ordinary addition usual addition in each case the identity element is 0 and the inverse of an element a is minus a in fact all these are abelian groups because they satisfy a commutative property also if you take the set of integers you take a into b or b into a resultant is same the values are same that means the set of integers in fact forms an abelian group similarly set of rational numbers set of real numbers also forms an abelian groups now you, you take this set 1 minus 1 iota minus iota okay you take this set now set is 1 minus 1 iota minus iota we know that iota square is minus 1 and what is the binary operation under which binary operation we are seeing that it will it will forms a group or not under usual multiplication we know that the usual multiplication is a binary operation for for this g uh, why it is binary operation this you can easily see you take 1 minus 1 iota minus iota okay you take 1 minus 1 iota minus iota now you multiply 1 with 1 is 1 1 with minus 1 is minus 1 1 with iota is iota this is minus iota minus 1 with 1 is minus 1 then plus 1 minus iota my iota square is minus 1 ok it is plus iota ok iota with 1 is iota it is minus iota iota square is minus 1 minus iota square is 1 it is minus iota it is plus iota it is I minus iota square is 1 and it is minus 1 now you have you we have seen all the possible multiplication of the elements of g with itself and we have seen that all the elements in this set are in g itself that means this uh, usual multiplication on this set g is in binary operation that is clear because because if you multiply any element of g with itself okay all the elements all the elements are in g itself that means usual multiplication on this g is a binary operation so first property is hold now we see we have to see the associative property so associativity is always hold in multiplication in usual multiplication is always satisfied then we have to see uh, identity element existence of identity element if you take any any a any a in g any a in g then a a into e should be equals to e into a should be e for all a in g this implies e is equals to 1 which is in g you have see you see here this is 1 which is in g so that means identity element also exist 
which is in G. Now, the existence of inverse, if you see the existence of inverse, so you take any A in G, then for inverse A B should be equals to B A should be equals to E, which is 1, then this implies B is equals to 1 by A. Okay. If you take the inverse of 1, inverse of 1 is 1 by 1, which is 1, which is in G. If you take inverse of minus 1, minus 1 inverse is 1 upon minus 1, which is minus 1 is also in G. Inverse of iota, which is 1 upon iota, which is minus iota, it is also in G. And inverse of minus iota is 1 upon minus iota, which is iota, it is also in G. So, inverse of all the elements exist. Okay, identity element exists, associativity property holds. So, we say that this, this set G under this binary operation, I mean usual multiplication constitute a group. Now, you set this, you, you take this set, the set S, which is set of all 2 cross 2 matrices, which whose determinant are not equal to 0. That means, invertible matrices of order 2 cross 2. Now, <coughs> now if you take so, so here uh, binary operation which we are uh, choosing is a uh, usual multiplication, it forms a non-abelian group. Now, let us see how. So, we are taking all, uh, all those uh, 2 cross 2 matrices whose determinant are not equal to 0. Okay. And uh, what is the operation we are applying? Operation is usual multiplication. Okay. Now, you take any A comma B belongs to S, this means determinant of A is not equal to 0 and determinant of B is not equal to 0. Okay. If you take the multiplication of these two matrices A into B and take the determinant, the determinant of A B is equal to determinant of A into determinant of B which is also not equal to 0, this implies A B belongs to S. That means, this usual multiplication forms a binary operation on this set S. Okay. Now, we have to see associativity, the matrices satisfy associative property we already know that A B into C is same as A B C for all A B C in S, this is, satis this is always satisfied in case of matrices. Now, existence of identity element. You take, you take any A in S, A into some uh, E should be equals to E into A should be A. So, this implies E is equals to I and determinant of I is, is, is not equal to 0. So, this implies I also belongs to S. So, this guarantees the existence of identity element in S. Now, we have to see uh, now, we have to see uh, existence of inverse element. You take any A in S, then A B should be equals to B A should be equals to I and this implies B is equals to A inverse. Now, inverse exists because determinant is not equal to 0 and this and since uh, determinant is not equal to 0, then determinant of A inverse is also not equal to 0. Uh, determinant of B will be what? determinant of A inverse and which is equals to 1 upon determinant of A which is also not equal to 0 because determinant because from here determinant of A is not equal to 0 and this implies B belongs to S. So, we have shown the existence of inverse element also in S. So, hence we can say that this S constitute a group under usual multiplication. Okay. Now, it is a non, it, it is a non abelian group. Why non abelian? Because, because if you multiply A into B or you multiply B into A, they need not be equal. A into A, B, it need not be equal to B into A for all A, B in S. Okay. So, it, it is a group, but it is not an abelian group. Okay. Now, the set of integers Z excluding 0 under ordinary multiplication is not a group. Because if you, you can clearly see, if you uh, identity element is there, identity element under multiplication is 1, but if you take element say 2, its inverse is 
1 by 2 which is not a which is not in which is not in this set set of integers excluding 0 hence it will not constitute a group. So, this is all about group now we come to field and then we go to matrices ok. Now, what is the field let us see let us quickly see a non empty set f equipped with two binary operations addition and multiplication is said to be a field if it satisfies the following axioms for all a b c in f. Now, here in fields instead of one binary operation we are having two binary operations. The first binary operation we are denoting by addition it may be any any operation, but we are denoting it by addition and the second binary operation we are denoting by multiplication. Now, the first property is commutativity holds of for addition and multiplication that means, a plus b should be equals to b plus a for all a b in f and a into b should be equals to b in b into a in case in, in case of both the binary operations number 1. Number 2 associativity of addition and multiplication must hold ok. Existence of identity existence of additive and multiplicative identities should exist that is 0 we are denoting 0 as the additive identity and 1 as a multiplicative identity. So, 0 plus a should be a and 1 dot a should be a for all a in f. Then existence of additive and multiplicative inverses. So, here minus a is simply additive inverse of a and 1 by b is simply multiplicative inverse of b where b is a non-zero element in f ok and the distribution of multiplication over addition from right also and from left also from left and from right this must hold. So, what what I want to say basically that uh, in case that in case of field we are having two binary operations one we are calling as addition other we are calling as multiplication. So, f with respect to addition must be an abelian group ok and all non-zero element in f over multiplication must constitute an abelian group and that and the next property is distribution of multiplication over addition ok. So, if these three property hold that means, uh, with respect to addition f must be an abelian group with respect to multiplication the set excluding 0 in f must be an abelian group and distribution of multiplication over addition this property must hold. So, if these broadly if these three property holds then we say that f is a field. Let us see few examples based on this now you see set of real numbers. Now, if you see set of real numbers and which is a binary operation the first binary operation is usual addition and the next binary operation usual multiplication. Now, usual addition forms an uh, abelian group uh, for this set of real numbers we have already seen ok. And if you exclude 0 from the set of real numbers it will also forms an abelian group with respect to multiplication and dot and multiplication distribute over addition also from left and from right also. So, we say that the set of real numbers with the usual addition and multiplication forms a field is a field ok. Now, you see, you see the set of complex numbers ok usual addition and usual multiplication again the two binary operations are usual addition usual multiplication. Now, you see the set of uh, complex numbers set of complex numbers under usual addition constitute a abelian group this we can easily see all the four properties I mean uh, it is a binary operation addition is a binary operation number 1 associativity identity is 0 and the inverse is inverse is minus a of any a in c. So, and also a into b is equals to b into a for all uh, elements a b and c. So, it constitute a abelian group over usual multiplication and if you exclude 0 from this c then this will also constitute abelian group over usual multiplication ok. And uh, multiplication satisfy distributive over addition also. So, it will constitute a field. Uh, similarly, the third example set of ra uh, rational numbers with a usual addition usual multiplication is also a field. Now, uh, see some examples which are not which are not fields 
suppose we are considering set of integers. Now, set of integers under usual addition, set of integers under usual addition constitute a abelian group, it is true, but under usual multiplication it does not form a group even, because if you take a element say 2 in z, so its inverse is multiplicative inverse is 1 by 2 which is not in z. So, this set of integers does not constitute group under multiplication, so it will not constitute a field. Similarly, if you take Euclidean space say R 2, R 2 is all x y such that x y are in R. Okay. Now, under usual addition it again constitute a group, I mean abelian group in fact, because uh, associativity property hold identity is 0 comma 0 and inverse of any a comma b in R 2 is minus a minus b which is also in R 2. But if you take the multi, if you see with respect to multiplication excluding 0 0, there are other elements say 1 comma 0 which is which are in R 2, but its inverse does not exist. Hence, this R 2 under usual multiplication does not constitute a group. So, it is not a field. Now, come to matrices. So, we define group and field because we want to define matrices over a field k, matrices are always, always defined over a field. Okay. So, that is that is why we first clear out that what do you mean by a field. Okay. Now, we define matrices, what do you mean by matrices? So, a matrix A over a field k, k may be any field is a rectangular array of scalars usually represented uh, in the following form. So, any matrix A can be represented as a rectangular form A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3 up to A 1 n and similarly A M n, A M 1, M 2 and A M n. So, if you take any A i j, A i j means i j entry of this matrix A, i j entry means the element in the i th row and in the j th column. Suppose we are talking about A 2 2, A 2 2 is the element in the second row and in the second column. If we are talking about A 2 n, A 2 n means element in the second row and nth column. Okay. So, we denote a matrix by simply writing A equals to A i j and this denote the order of the matrix. The order of the matrix is m into n because number of rows here are m and number of columns here are n. So, the order of the matrix is m cross n rows into columns. So, these are general representation of a matrix A which is uh, A i j means any element i j th, i is varying from 1 to m and j is varying from 1 to n. These are some simple properties of a matrices, we already know these things that A plus 0 equals to the 0 matrix, okay. because 0 plus A equal to A, A minus A equal to 0. A plus B associativity property hold with respect to addition and multiplication, then it distribute dot distribute over, multi, over addition because uh, it uh, um, satisfies this property A plus B equals to B plus A. These three are the very basic properties, this already holds in uh, matrices. Now, properties of transpose, what do you mean by transpose? Transpose means you change interchange rows and columns. Okay. Suppose Suppose A is any matrix, which is suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is, it is having 3 rows and 2 columns and you want to find out A transpose. So, A transpose means you simply write, you simply convert rows into columns that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is the way, this is the uh, way of writing A transpose means you interchange rows by columns, the first row in first column, second row in second column, third row in third column. Okay. So, these property hold for transpose also A plus minus B whole transpose is A transpose plus minus B transpose, K into A whole transpose is K times A transpose where K is any scalar, transpose of transpose is itself and if A into B is defined then A into B whole transpose is, is equal to B transpose into A transpose. Now, adjoint of a matrix, let A be a 
n cross n matrix a square matrix of order n cross n then how to find a joint first you first find cofactor of a element a i j which is given by minus 1 raised to power minus minus 1 raised to power i plus j m i j where m i j is a minor of a i j ok this we already know at joint of a is simply uh, you make the matrix of cofactors and then take the transpose that will be the adjoint of a matrix A. And we also denote it by uh, this expression adjoint of A. Then the third property is A into adjoint of A is equal to adjoint of A into A is equal to determinant of A times identity matrix of the same order of course n cross n. Then determinant of adjoint of A is determinant of A raised to power n minus 1. This is very easy to prove you can simply see here. As, as you have seen that uh, uh, A into adjoint of A is equals to adjoint of A into A equal to determinant of A times identity. So, you take uh, this is this is A into adjoint of A is equal to determinant of A times identity. Now, you take determinant both the sides. Okay. Now, this is A into B, the determinant of A into B is equal to determinant of A into determinant of B and also determinant of K into A where K is any scalar and A is a matrix of order n cross n is simply equal to K raised to power n determinant of A if A is a matrix of order n cross n. Okay. Because this this k is multiplied with all the um, uh, elements of A, and when you take the determinant, you can take the you, you can take the common from each row, first row, second row, up to nth row. So k raised to power n will be common, and then it will be determinant of A. So here, determinant of A works as k because it's a scalar, it's a uh, scalar quantity, and I is a matrix of order n cross n. So, it is determinant of A raised to power n and determinant of i. Determinant of i is 1, so it is determinant of i. So, this implies determinant of adjoint of A is simply determinant of A raised to power n minus 1. Also, we know this thing that if, if matrix is invertible, then inverse exists and inverse is given by adjoint of A upon determinant of A. Now, this, this is a very simple uh, problem. Let us see just to illustrate few properties of matrices. Okay. Now, here determinant of A is 3 and A is a matrix of, order of 2 cross 2 order. If you want to find out determinant of 2A, so it will be simply because we know that determinant of K into A is equal to K raised to power n times determinant of A, if uh, A is a matrix of order n cross n. Here matrix of order 2 cross 2 and K is 2. So, it is 2 raised to power 2 determinant of A which is 4 into 3 which is 12. If you want to find out a determinant of adjoint of A, it is simply determinant of A raised to power n minus 1, here n is 2 okay? and determinant of A is 3, so 3 raised to power 1 which is 3. If you want to find out determinant of adjoint of 2A transpose, so it is simply determinant of 2 A transpose whole raised to power 2 minus 1 which is determinant of 2 A transpose which is equals to 2 raised to power n 2 raised to power n which is 2 into determinant of A transpose. Determinant of A transpose and A are same. So, it is determinant of A which is equals to 4 into 3 which is 12. Okay. So, in this way we can simply solve uh, this problem. Okay. So, these are some uh, special type of matrices. Row matrix is a matrix is said to be a row matrix if it consists only one row. Column matrix a matrix said to be a column matrix if it consists of only one column. Diagonal matrix or ma square matrix uh, is said to be diagonal if its non-diagonal entries are all 0 that is a diagonal matrix. A scalar matrix, a diagonal matrix said to be scalar if 
its all diagonal elements are same say k. Symmetric matrix means a matrix A is said to be symmetric if A transpose A equal to A that is A i j equals to A j i for all i j. We will discuss more about symmetric and skew symmetric matrix in detail later on. Okay. Skew symmetric matrix a matrix A is said to be skew symmetric if A transpose is equal to minus A that is A i j equal to minus A j i for all i and j and also the diagonal element of skew symmetric matrix are 0. Now, what are elementary row operations? So, first we are talking about matrices over the field F or over the field K. So, these, these scalars, scalars whatever we are talking about comes from the field. If the field is a set of real numbers, then the scalars will be a set uh, I mean uh, real and if we are talking about the set of complex numbers, the scalars come from the set of complex numbers. Okay. Now, what are elementary row operations? Let us see. There are three elementary row operations on an M cross and matrix A over the field F. What are they? Number 1, multiplication of any row of A by a non-zero scalar C. You see, if you take any, any row Rj of a matrix A, and you multiply that row by a non-zero scalar c, then this is the first elementary row operation which we can apply on a matrix A. The second um, elementary row operation is replacement of the rth row of A by row plus c times s row, where c is an scalar and r is not equal to s. That means, you take any rth row. Okay. And you replace this rth row by the rth row plus c times some other sth row, then, uh, then this is a second elementary row operation on any matrix A. And you can always interchange any two rows, you can interchange ith row with jth or jth with by ith, i is not equal to j. So, these are the three basic elementary row operations. Number one, one is you can multiply an, an uh, row by any non-zero scalar C. Then you can always for any uh, row, you can always take row plus C times some other row R S and you can always interchange any two rows of A. So, these are the three elementary row operations. Now, let us discuss this by an example. Now, first thing is let us let us discuss this also first definition. If A and B are M cross and matrices over the field F, we say that B is row equivalent to A if B can be obtained from A by the finite sequence of elementary row operations. You see you have a matrix A and you apply some elementary row operations on that matrix and you get a new matrix B. Then we say that the matrix B is row equivalent to A. Okay. Now, you, you, you take now you uh, we discuss this example. Okay. You take a uh, let us suppose you take a equal to 1 2 3 minus 1 0 2 2 4 4. Now, using elementary row operations transform a into identity matrix. Suppose, suppose we have to apply uh, elementary row operation on this matrix a and we have to convert this matrix into an identity matrix. So, how can we convert this? So, let us see here is a solution let us uh, discuss a solution first. So, this is matrix A, okay, this is a matrix A. So, in the identity we have to take this element as 1, the first element as 1 and, uh, and in that column all that all the elements must be 0. Okay. Similarly, uh, similarly for the second element and for the third element I mean in diagonal. Now, to make 0 here, which elementary row operation we will apply? To make 0 here, we will take this row R 2 and we add with R 1, because minus 1 plus 1 will become 0 here. So, we make first elementary row operation in R 2 row and we replace R 2 by R 2 plus R 1. Okay. Now, this minus 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So, this is the first elementary row operation which we have applied in this matrix. Now, the next is we have to make 0 here, 
because we want to make identity here ok. Now, to make 0 here we have to take the third row and we have to subtract 2 times the first row I mean we have to replace the third row by r 3 minus 2 times r 1 then it will become 0 2 minus 2 times 1 becomes 0. So, this minus 2 times this 0 this minus 2 times this becomes 0 this minus 2 times this become minus 2. Now, now we have to make 1 here to make identity. So, replace this row by 1 by 2 this row I mean replace r 2 by 1 by 2 r 2 because you want to make 1 here ok. So, you replace r 2 by 1 by 2 r 2 we get another matrix which is this 1 2 3 0 1 5 by 2 because we divide by 2 here and 0 0 minus 2. Now, we want to make 1 here ok. So, we divide this by minus 2 if you divide this by minus 2 or replace this row by minus 1 by 2 times r 3 then it is 0 uh, it is 1 2 3 0 1 5 by 2 0 0 1. Now, you have to make 0 here 0 here and 0 here to complete the identity matrix to make 0 here with the help of this row you simply take this row row 1 and you subtract it with twice of row 2 that means in the row 1 you apply the elementary row operation r 1 minus 2 times r 2. So, this minus 2 times this is 1 this minus 2 times this is 0 this minus 2 times this is minus 2 and all the all other elements remain the same. Now, you have to make 0 here. So, to make 0 here we take the help of this 1. So, this plus 2 times this I mean r 1 you replace r 1 by r 1 plus 2 times r 3. So, this plus 2 times this is 1 this plus 2 times this is 0 this plus 2 times this is 0 and the other elements remain the same. Now, you want to make 0 here to complete the identity matrix. So, this minus 5 by 2 times this row I mean r 2 you replace r 2 by r 2 minus 5 by 2 times r 3. So, this will be the identity matrix. So, uh, we have applied a series of uh, series of uh, elementary row operations to get to convert matrix A into an identity matrix ok. Now, if you talk about this matrix A this matrix. So, this matrix is obtained from the matrix A by two elementary row operations. So, we can say that this matrix is a row equivalent matrix to A or in fact we can say any matrix any matrix up to here are the row equivalent forms of the matrix A because they are they are obtained by applying some elementary row operation on the matrix A ok. Now, let us discuss these examples suppose uh, suppose uh, discuss first example suppose we discuss to convert this into an identity matrix by applying elementary row operation ok. So, the what is the matrix you see matrix is 2 minus 1 0 it is 1 minus 1 2 it is minus 1 0 1 it is a matrix. Now, by applying elementary row operation you want to transform this matrix into an identity matrix. So, how you will proceed in the first column you see if there is any 1 I mean any element uh, any, any element 1 then you interchange those rows first ok. So, first what you do you take uh, you replace uh, r 1 and r 2 you interchange r 1 and r 2. So, this is 1 minus 1 2 it is 2 minus 1 0 it is minus 1 0 1 uh, to make our calculation easy the other way out is you divide it by 2 and then apply the elementary row operations ok. Now, here now you want to make 0 here with the help of this. So, to make 0 here with the help of this you replace r 2 by r 2 minus 2 times r 1 then only it become 0. So, it is 1 minus 1 2 it is 0 this minus 2 times this is 1 this minus 2 times this is minus 4 it is minus 1 0 1. Now, you want to make 0 here with the help of this. So, replace r 3 by r 3 plus r 1. So, this will be 1 minus 1 2 it will be 0 1 minus 4 it will be 0 minus 1 3. Now, this is already 1 you want to make 0 here because you have to complete identity matrix. So, again you apply elementary row operation you will replace r 3 by r 3 plus r 2. 
So, this will be 1 minus 1 2, it will be 0 1 minus 4, it will be 0 0 minus 1. Now, it is minus 1, you have to make 1 here. So, you, you, you multiply this by minus 1, you replace R 3 by minus of R 3. So, this is 1 minus 1 2, 0 1 minus 4, 0 0 1. Now, you want to make 0 here with the help of this. So, you replace R 2 R 1 by you replace R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. So, it is 1 0 minus 2, it is 0 1 minus 4, it is 0 0 1. Okay. Now, you want to make 0 here with the help of this. So, this plus 2 times this. So, in uh, R 1 you take R 1 plus 2 times R 3. So, it is 1 0 minus 2, 0 1 minus 4, 0 okay, it is 0 0. So, this this will be simply uh, 0 and it is 0 1. Now, you want to make 0 here with the help of this. So, this plus 4 times this will give you the identity matrix that means, uh, you replace R 2 by R 2 plus 4 times R 3. So, it will be an identity matrix now. So, these are the elementary operations which we, which we, which we apply uh, to convert this uh, matrix A into an identity matrix. Similarly, we can proceed for the second problem. So, thank you very much.